Hey, everybody, how you doing? It's Effie inside your midday. And as promised, Urban Praise, we are so excited here at Moody Radio and Urban Praise. We've got, you know, you don't even have to, all you have to do is say his name. You can be, you know, and, and really the world will come to a pause when you say the name Marvin Sapp. So you really need no introduction, but I will say uh, multiple Grammy Award winner. I mean, just super duper star, bishop, pastor, you have your own record label, Elevate Entertainment. And just what can you say? Just a super amazing uh, gospel music recording artist. Y'all the one and only bishop, pastor. Legend, <laughs> my God, never would have made it. Oh my goodness. The best in me, praise him in advance. Oh my goodness, you kept me, Jesus. I mean, one thing I desired, y'all give it up for Marvin Sapp. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you so very much, Abby. That's that's a whole lot, but uh, thank you. Thank you anyway. I'm like, ain't no sense in even wasting time trying to do that bio, because it's too long. That would oh, be my. the whole interview. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so it's yeah. the whole interview. I, I'm like, I don't like when people read that anyway. So thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, I guess what you've done a lot. Do you ever look back and say, wow, God, did you even ever imagine as a kid that that would be your your life, your legacy? No, never in my wildest imagination did I ever think that, you know, I would have been able to accomplish and do the things that I've done. And um, every day is a wow moment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I wake up, I'm, I'm amazed that, you know, the things that God has allowed me to do and, and even the opportunities that he consistently keeps giving me. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm grateful. I mean, beyond grateful. And uh, I just appreciate the fact that God still trusts me enough to still use me in this capacity. Well, he is doing it, brother, and you are doing it. I mean, doing it big time. Okay, Pastor, you're here in Chicago yes. recording. 16th yeah. live recording. My 16th album. I can't believe that. I, oh, I never, wow. again, you look back and you say, and I didn't even count them. So I guess, you know, my publicist had to tell me, you do know this is your 16th project. And I'm like, dang, you know, 16 of them. Uh, that's, you know, 16 projects, 13 Grammy nominations. It's just been, it's been great. So, you know, I'm looking forward to this because I've never done anything like this in Chicago. And, uh, you know, tickets are definitely still available. Um, actually, we're going to be taking, uh, you know, folks at the door. So if you don't get a ticket online, you know, just come to the door of the church. And, um, and we're going to make sure that we get you all in because, you know, I want the Chicago land to come and be a part of what I consider to be an amazing moment. So the doors of the church is open. Come on. The door in. Of the church is open. Come on, hang out with me. <laughs> And again, what I know, I know you're going to be with your longtime buddy, drummer. I think he was your music director too. Yeah. Pastor Ray, Ray Beatty. Was, yeah, Pastor Ray Beatty was my music director uh, up until he became the pastor of this church. And I fired him. I fired him. I said, you can't, you can't be on the road with me no more. But I don't go on the road that much either. But I was telling him, I said, how are you going to be my MD and, and the senior pastor of this church? So. Uh, two years ago, before he started, he did his last gig with me. And I, I kind of remember where it was because we was talking about it yesterday. Um, but but it, it was at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, myself and John P. Key. And uh, that's when Ray, Ray played his last gig just before he uh, transitioned here to, uh, you know, Valley Kingdom. Wow. I know that's going to be a wonderful. And that was from 1996, from 1996 <laughs> until 2022. He yeah. was faithful. He, he was faithful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm grateful for him, too. Yes, I, I know it's going to be so good. Uh, so, again, is that why you chose Chicago? One of the reasons why I chose Chicago is, is because Chicago has always been very, very good to me musically. Um, you know, if you do a, a, a study as it pertains to your career, which I hope most artists do, you try to figure out, you know, where are your biggest markets? And, of course, you know, Detroit was number one. Uh, the D.C., Del Delaware, Maryland area was number two for me. And number three was Chicago. And I'd already done live recordings in Grand Rapids. Uh, I've already done a live recording in the D.C. area. Um, so I said, you know, as I I'm, I'm not going to say um, I'm I'm on the conclusion of my career, but I am going to say I'm definitely on the tail end of it. And uh, one of my passions and one of my desires was to come to 
you know, the Chicagoland area and, uh, you know, do a CD, a live recording. And what better place to do it at than at one of my best friends and one of my brother's churches. So, you know, um, it's an intimate setting, which I'm I'm grateful for for that. So, you know, we didn't try to do anything like the Air Crown or, you know, any place that was, you know, UIC. We wanted it to be intimate and, and uh, you know, for those who kind of embrace and love, you know, our music, you know, they could come be a part of it. Amen. And, and we're talking about Valley Kingdom Ministries. Valley Kingdom uh, Ministries. 5300, let me make sure I got it right, 151st Street. And that yeah. is in Oak Forest, which is about maybe 20 miles from downtown Chicago. So it's really not far at all. It's, it's pretty. Down the, yeah, down, down the, street. the street. Down the road is what we used to say in Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. It's down the street across the field. Okay, I'm real country. Okay, <laughs> but that is going to be absolutely amazing. I remember, I remember, ah, man, I may have been at the other station before I came here. I'm almost positive you said you were going to quit about seven years ago. You you're, you made an announcement you were going to do your last recording. What made yeah. you continue? Honestly, actually, it was longer than that. Um, I, I said I was done. And really was going to focus on my ministry in 2006. Mm. And what happened, Thirsty happened. Never would have made it happen. And uh, because Thirsty happened and never would have made it happen, it, it kind of put me in a position where um, I didn't have any choice but to keep doing, you know, what, what you know, I was doing. And also I had to figure out a way where I could balance um, not balanced because I hate using that word, well, but to prioritize what's most important in my life. And and I had to set the priorities the way I needed to set them, which was, you know, first it was God, second it was family, um, third it was preaching, fourth it was music, and then fifth it was my entrepreneurial responsibilities, the goals, the things that I wanted to do as it pertains to real estate and education and all the other stuff. So once I prioritized everything the way I needed to prioritize it, it kind of made it easy for me to be able to navigate in all of these spaces. Um, so it's it's been fun. Uh, you know, I, I don't live in, in the state of Michigan anymore. I'm in Texas now. And, uh, you know, just, you know, being able to recalibrate and to re-envision ministry and, you know, be in an atmosphere where I can be creative again. It's, it's been, it's been, it's been exhilarating. So, you know, having this opportunity to come and display music and to do some old, to do some new and, you know, just just have a great time. I'm just really looking forward to it. We are so looking forward to it, too. Tell me, is it difficult to give hit after hit after hit? And then the next time you get go in the studio or record, do you like in the back of your mind? I know you're probably saying, God, I'm, I give you all the glory. Whatever happens, happens. I'm going to do my best. But is there a lot of pressure to have another hit? I don't know if there's necessarily a lot of pressure um, because I think for me, once I figured out what people enjoy that I did, I just remain consistent. So, I, you know, I think, you know, I think one of the, the challenges that that a lot of the new artists may have is that they, you know, they're still trying to recreate and try to do new and try to change and try to shift. You know, once I found out, you know, the type of music that my audience enjoyed me singing, I, I tried to make sure that I produced music and made sure that the lyrical content of the songs that I sang, they lined up with the last record and the record before that and the record before that and the record before that. So um, whenever I, I put together a, a particular CD or put together an album, you know, depending on what your age demographic is, um, I always come to it with the mentality and mindset that I want to give horizontal music uh, because I'm not a vertical singer. I'm a horizontal singer um, that encourages the believer to, you know, try to uh, get through their issues, their challenges and their struggles, but at the same time, pointing them to the one that can help them get through. Wow. So once you really understand your assignment musically, um, don't deviate, just do what works. And and I figured out the formula and that formula works for me. Wow, I love it. You know, speaking of music, I was gonna ask you, how do you stay to your core? You know, you've been faithful to your, your you know, that true gospel music genre. 
Whereas mm -hmm. sometimes you hear folks saying it's been happening for a long time. Uh, you know, even back in the days of BB and CC, you know, when folks were saying, oh, they ain't doing gospel. You know, is that real gospel? But now it does seem that sometimes you really don't know, you know, what's gospel and what's not. And, you know, but yet you stay true to your core. Right. I think, I think when it comes to the gospel music genre, and I, you know, I, I use the word genre, you know, it, it's, it's so vast now. I mean, like when I was first got started, you know, 34 plus years ago, uh, it was either contemporary or traditional, you know, that was it, you know, it was either you was contemporary or you were traditional, you know, now, you know, you got so many different, you got urban contemporary gospel, you got you know, traditional, and then you got mild traditional, and then you have, uh, you know, uh, hip hop, and then you have, you know, praise and worship, and you, you got all of these different uh, labels that are a part of this gumbo that I'd like to call gospel music, because it, it's, it's, but I think at the end of the day, um, if you really want to know what the gospel music is, if you really want to know what gospel music is, it's the good news of Jesus Christ. So if if the message of your song is pointing you to Christ, pointing an individual to Christ, pointing them to, to solidifying, establishing, growing, maturing in their relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that's the gospel. Outside of that, it's just good music. And, uh, you know, I agree with you. A lot of the stuff that's being sung, um, a lot of the stuff that's being written, um, it's just good songs. I mean, that we can sing at church, uh, but it doesn't make it the gospel unless it gives us a clearly defined focus and direction to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let the church say amen. All right. I know we've got but a few more minutes, but I just wanted to say, um, you speaking of your of Fort Worth, your church, yeah. uh, how's it going? How's it going? How's the chosen vessels going? It's going great. And I love it. I love it. I, the best, one of the greatest decisions I've ever made was transitioning from the city of Grand Rapids, Michigan to, uh, to the, to the Fort Worth area, even though I don't live in Fort Worth, I, I stay south of Dallas, but, um, you know, you never know how bad you need change until you get there. Mm -hmm. and, and I tell that all the time. And um, this was the greatest decision I could have made in this season of my life. Um, because I was, I, I could, I tell people this all the time. I was literally dying in my city mm -hmm. um, simply because I was in a place where I was functioning and not healed. And until I got out of that environment, I didn't know how bad it was. So, you know, I'm really, really looking uh, forward to, you know, being able to share to share on, on Friday evening again, seven o'clock, get there, be on time, um, doors open at six. Um, and I'm looking forward to sharing music, you know, from this new space uh, that I'm in mentally and spiritually. Amen. Wow. Yeah, we we're talking to Pastor Marvin Sapp. Gospel recording artist, superstar, 16th recording is going to be tomorrow night, Friday, May 31st. Can you believe May is almost over? Woo. I can't believe it's almost over. <laughs> yes, and Valley Kingdom Ministries. Okay, the, the time we have left, just want to ask you, as we approach Father's Day, happy Father's Day in advance. Um, okay, your kids are like gone and gro grown and gone, right? Just about. 30, 27, 25. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, you've done a lot. Like you said, you uprooted, went to you know, uh, Texas, of course, raised your children, uh, you know, as a single dad. What What's the one thing you, as we approach Father's Day, that you could maybe give to encourage uh, another young man or, you know, brother that may be in that situation, raising their children? Um, what could you give them um, as we approach Father's Day? Or find themselves, you know, being single too. What can you give them in a few minutes? Fight to remain in your children's life. Mm. Oh. Statistically, uh, one of the things I read, which really uh, uh, kept me focused um, as it pertains to uh, being a dad, is that statistically, when a single father is in the lives of the children, uh, they have a better advantage of raising holistically healthy children than single mothers that now that's not a a slight against single mothers that's just saying that when you look at it from a statistical standpoint 
and there's a lot of uh, information, you know, online and stuff to support what I'm saying. Um, and then even when we look at it from a biblical standpoint, I mean, you know, fathers are absolutely important in rearing their children. And I know moms are like, I don't need a man. Well, you, you may not need him, but your children absolutely do. So I want to admonish each and every dad, you know, you know, fight to be in your children's lives. Mm -hmm. uh, don't just be stuck in a place where you, I give, I give child support. Well, child support is an emotional support. It's, it's, it's not, uh, the type of support that the child needs as it pertains to building their character and building their levels of integrity. Um, you know, it, it was it was difficult for me. Um, my wife passed away 14 years ago and it was very hard raising an 11, a 13 and a 16 year old, two girls and a boy. But, you know, when I look back now, you know, the sacrifices that I made for them, they were absolutely worth it. And uh, if I had to do it all over again, I would simply because, you know, that's what that's what fathers are supposed to do. So, you know, be that dad, you know, uh, take that time, make that way. You don't know, me and the mama don't get along, but you ain't got to get along with the mama. <laughs> you got to get along with them children. Mm -hmm. and so, and, and I want to say this, you know, I always tell people this too. Uh, this is one of the things you know, when we have Father's Day, you know, I, I tell women all the time, you know, they's like, well, I'm the mama and the daddy. No, you're not. You're the mother. Uh, don't try to take Father's Day from a man because men don't try to take Mother's Day from a mother. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but but understand, ladies, you know, that 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 man is intricately important, absolutely significant to the building of the character of that child. So bruh, fight, fight to be in your child's life because it's 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 needed. You've done an amazing job and happy Father's Day in advance. Wow. Um, okay, in the few minutes we have left, real quick, what scripture has kept you grounded? My favorite scripture on the planet is Ephesians 3 and 20, where it says, now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we would dare to ask according to the power that works in us. It's important that we understand that there is power on the inside of us that has to connect to the power of God in order for us to experience the exceeding abundantly and above. And I think what we tend to think is, is that, you know, God does it all, but there has to be a synergy. There has to be a connectivity. And uh, that means that there has to be an alignment. Uh, so when we we align ourselves uh, totally, completely to the will and the, uh, the purpose of God, that's when the exceeding abundantly above begins to happen. Mm, love it. That's one of my favorites, too. All right. Pastor Marvin Sapp, superstar, legend, amazing icon, uh, getting ready for the 16th live recording tomorrow night. Valley Kingdom Ministries Inter International, Oak Forest, 5300 West, 151st Street. As they say, all roads lead right there. OK, what can we expect other than an overflow of the anointing, other than you just pouring out to God, of course, that's more than enough. But any surprises, any duets, any special guests? Nope. No surprises. We just gonna have a great time. No, just come. Out, I promise you, I'm gonna do some stuff from then, and I'm gonna do some stuff from now. Okay, we're well, looking forward to it. So, again, how can people tickets? So a few, some tickets are still available. Yeah. Enough to, for you and your family and your friends and your church members and your choir to get on in. Absolutely, Probably. definitely. Go to marvinsap.com. And if you can't get to marvinsap.com, just come to the door. You know, it's just that simple. You just come to the door, $25. And, uh, you know, it's it's going to be crazy. I promise you, you're going to enjoy it. I know it is. Man, we're so glad you're in Chicago. Uh, and I know I know it's going to be amazing because you are. I was telling somebody, I said, hey, this is a major league artist. So you're going to get there ahead of time. Not only is probably everybody from all the country, all over the country going to be there. Yeah, you people... can walk into, into no recording of a Marvin Sapp late. You know what I'm saying? You don't do yeah. that. Please get there on time because this, I, you know, I'm very timely and uh, it's it's gonna be it's yeah. I want and I want to make sure y'all get out on time too because okay. here, here's the thing: I got to go home because I got a church to pastor. So, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm an artist on Friday, but I'm a pastor on Sunday. Wow. So, and you still make most of your services? I make all of my services. That I don't play. Uh, I make all my service every Sunday, every Tuesday. 
God bless your ministry. I love it. I love it. And of course, you're getting ready for the reunion tour. Reunion yeah. tour. The Clark, yeah. Fred Hammond, Yolanda Adams, Kirk, you, Marvin Sapp. Wow. It's going to be crazy. And I'm telling you, Susie tickets going to sell here. Make sure you get them because yeah. Kirk and I and Fred and Yolanda and, and the Clarks, we got some stuff up our sleeves. Ah, oh, man, y'all can just get up there and say, la, 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 <laughs> I wish, was, like, yes, Lord. I wish it was that easy. I can't <laughs> lie, lie, lie to this one. We got to get things up. Mm. Okay. Anything else we need to know? Any last words you want to share with the Urban Praise audience and Moody Radio and just, you know, everybody? Anything else you want to share before you go? Nope. Just get to tomorrow night. Just please come be, come be with me. Okay. Pastor Marvin Sapp, again, your own record label, Elevate. 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 Elevate entertainment, yeah. All right, and we're going to be elevated to the spirit. Come there. I love what Cece said during her tour. She said, come ready to praise. Yeah, and please. Oh, yeah, set the, have the atmosphere already set. And I know, you know, you, you cannot help but have a, an amazing time. Pastor Sapp, I wish I had more time, but I know you got to go. And we want that voice to be rested. And I know you got to rehearse. And we just want, you know, the best. We pray for you. Um Thank you. You know, we 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 love you, always will. And again, thank you for this time. Thank you for always being humble. Thank um, you. You know, we appreciate that because you didn't have to do it. Oh, you know what I mean? I, you know, you are there. You are there. <laughs> you know, Wherever you there is. There. I, just, <laughs> I, I tell people all the time, um, never read your press. You know, just, just you know, enjoy the ride and, and treat people right on the way up because, you know, you ain't going to always be at the top and I'm not at the top. And uh, so, you know, I, I, I remember being, you know, that artist from 2000 to 2010 that everybody was talking about. And, uh, you know, now, you know, we're not at that that plateau anymore, but at the same token, you know, you have to remain grounded, you know, because this, 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 this thing is seasonal and seasons change. Um, but thank God I still have, you know, a group of people that, still enjoy listening to what I do. We so, love you, yeah. brother. Yeah, thank you, sis. I appreciate love you. It. I got All righty. It's Urban Praise, Bishop Marvin Sapp, tomorrow night, May 31st, Valley Kingdom Ministries. Doors open at 6. Don't wait till the last minute. You better get there, okay? <laughs> they, they still say be there, be square. I don't know, but anyway. <laughs> but yeah, get there. Our, our age group does, yes. Our okay, age group. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Bottom line, be in the house. We love you, Bishop. Thank you for this time. And God Appreciate bless your ministry. <laughs> Thank you. Love, you. love you. Okay, bye-bye.